Hello, and welcome to today's Saratech Enablement Session. My name is Andrea Hall, and I'm the Customer Relationship Manager here at Saratech, and I'll be your host today. Presenting, we have Chad Devine, who is a Service and Materials Manager here at Saratech, and he'll be talking to you about advanced material solutions and the applications they enable. Our, uh, our sessions run anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes, sometimes a little bit longer. Uh, each are all recorded and posted to our Saratech YouTube channel, so make sure you check out our past sessions there. Twice a month, we meet right here to learn about tips, tricks, new and old features that'll help you in your everyday tasks. This is an open forum, uh, so if you have any questions or comments, you can type them into the chat box or the questions box over to the right, and we will do a Q&A session at the end. Um, and if there's anything further that you need, you can always type uh, your additional questions and comments into the survey as soon as the session ends. And with that, I'm going to pass the baton over to Chad. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. My name is Chad Devine, and I'm the Field Service and Materials Manager for Saratech. I lead a team of field service engineers that maintain additive equipment and work with new and existing customers on solutions for their equipment. I have a background in oil and gas industry as a mechanical designer, and I was previously in the service bureau industry utilizing multiple additive equipment. Today we'll give you an overview of advanced manufacturing technologies and services offered by Saratech. How do our solutions stack up against each other in both material offerings and part creation capabilities? We will cover our current materials offered in a roadmap to the future, advanced material solutions and applications they enable. First off, I'd like to talk about Saratech. As Saratech continues to rapidly grow, we want to make sure that new and existing customers understand what Saratech is about and drive the benefit of our partnership, what we do and why we do it. We provide engineering and manufacturing solutions, including product lifecycle management software, engineering, consulting services, and manufacturing hardware. The Saratech team helps customers optimize their engineering and manufacturing processes by providing extensive product development expertise and technologies. We are not just a company that sells machines, we are a solutions company. Here we have what we call the Saratech Additive Ecosystem. We have selected these manufacturers because like in tooling, one size does not fit all. Whether you need continuous fiber embedded nylon or fast production cycle. Maybe your project needs a life size model, a lens that you can project through or even automation-driven metal manufacturing. Everything that you see here has core benefits and can be used to advance or maybe speed up the manufacturing times or automate the process. We work closely with Universal Robots, which provides code bots or collaborative robots to speed up additive manufacturing. This could be this could help remove parts from machines, start new prints, or move parts to a post-process station. Plus, they never complain, get bored, or quit without notice. We also carry a line of equipment from post-process. They are the leaders in automated support removal and surface finishing equipment. This will lead to a quicker design to end-use part life cycles or working prototypes in your hand. What we have compiled is all the Saratech additive ecosystems into one chart. We have chosen a list of values that we thought best represents the data points of our customers and what they might be looking for in additive equipment. If all four are priorities for you in the center, they might best meet your needs. There is six to seven machines that stack up in the middle that are good all around solutions, but they do not excel in any one feature. The outer points are systems that excel in one area. 
For instance, Big Rep 1, which is great for large part production. Pilot 450 being great in single part production and part quality. Here's another chart we've compiled of all the material offerings for our Ceratec ecosystem. We found that these four points represent the main interest of selecting the proper material for your solution. Tensile strength, working temperature, elongation at break, and flexibility. As you can see, we have a material selection that will fit in every additive manufacturing need. Here's a roadmap of materials that are newly available and then ones that are expected to be in the future. Materials that were released earlier in the year are closer to the left side of the chart. There's a lot to come in the future from these OEMs. HP has announced that they will be shipping the new 300-500 3D printers. They will be a multi-agent delivery system with color being the first to be released. HP has also announced that they'll be working on a metal printer. With MarkForge Metal X being released and starting to ship to customers, new materials to support these systems are also coming. Tool steel and 316 stainless steel being the next materials to be released for the customers. BigRep is also working on, a new on new reliable materials for their FFF printer. TPU and Nylon 6 are the new materials coming out this year. An advanced material solution we'll be speaking about today is investment casting, also known as lost wax casting. Some of you might be familiar with this process and some may not. I will give a brief process overview and show how advanced materials can speed up this process. This will be a savings in production time and help with cost savings of engineering changes. Now let's take a look at the process. You have to create a metal mold for your wax pattern to be formed. This is a costly process with long lead times. Once you have a few patterns created, they then are assembled on a pattern tree. Once a pattern tree is complete, it is dipped in a mixture of ceramic liquid and then dipped in a stucco solution. This process is repeated a few times to build up a thick outer shell. Once the tree is fully dry, it goes through a de-waxing oven process where the pattern is burnt out, leaving a hard shell. This, is, this void is where you'll pour molten metal into the hollow mold to create your casting. Once the mold cools, the ceramic is broken off the pattern and then goes through the finishing process where the parts are cut off the tree and then finished to the specific part. You may be asking yourself, what is an advanced material solution for lost wax casting? The solution is 3D printing your own patterns. On the left, what you see is a typical lost wax aluminum mold. This is a very expensive process where for making small production runs. The tooling has a long lead time due to complexity of the machining of the mold. To speed up the lost wax process and cut down on costly tooling, the foundry can use a 3D printed pattern. And this is achieved by printing and an additive 3D printer. The material must be anemone free and the parts need to be smooth to achieve a great casted part. On the right, the pictures show a honeycomb interior with rigid skins around the part. This will help with drain access material, making the pattern lightweight and strong. Having a sparse interior also helps with expansion of the, of the pattern so that it does not crack the outer shell. Did you know that all plastics fall into two categories when it comes to their reaction to heat? These two categories are called thermoplastics and thermal setting. Thermoplastic materials become soft when they're heated and solid when they're cooled to room temperature. This is similar to heating and cooling wax. Thermoplastics are materials such as acrylics, epolamides, fluoroplastics, polyvinyl, and polycarbonate. Thermal setting materials cannot be reheated and softened again. 
Once they are formed, they are similar to baking a cake or boiling an egg. Thermal settings are materials such as epoxies, polymers, and silicones. FDM or FFF is a type of thermoplastic process. Stratasys Polyjet or SLA are both thermal set process. Another advanced material application is short run injection molding. The tooling for injection molding can be quite expensive, but by 3D printing the molds, you can <clears throat> use them on a short injection run and save time and money. The process is achieved by printing in a high heat thermal set material. Using this material can help you gain high detail at a minimal cost. The picture on the left is a 3D printed mold inserted into an injection molding machine. And the mold in the middle is a detailed component shot at 150 degrees Celsius with a 20% glass filled polycarbonate. This mold produced 40 parts and was fully intact after the parts were produced. The mold on the right is a super detailed component that was shot at 270 degrees Celsius with polyamide 6. The mold produced 47 workable pieces. In the future, HP suggests we could soon 3D print prototype parts by printing sensors that might measure stress or durability and instantly send that information via Bluetooth, which would be built in during the printing process. HP has made claims to soon be jetting material process, maybe jetting material during the printing process that might be conductive. All right, next I'd like to show you a short video on what's to come from HP multi-agent delivery systems. In 3D design and printing, a voxel represents a value on a regular grid in a three-dimensional space, like a pixel with by other methods. Taking advantage of HP's in-depth knowledge of color science, HP's 3D printers could in the future selectively print a different color at each volumetric pixel. A single 3D printed part could have literally millions of colors. But more than just full color printing of functional parts, HP's multi-agent system enables a fundamentally different approach that could unlock the full potential of 3D printing. At each voxel, HP transforming agents could control surface texture, wear, and friction, enabling single parts with multiple textures or the monitoring of part performance. The transforming agents could control the translucency of each voxel, enabling the printing of lenses or sensors. We could also optimize the strength and stiffness in portions of a part and print elastic voxels in other portions of the part. The conductivity of certain voxels could also be controlled, enabling embedded electronics. HP transforming agents could also be used to enable the printing of new advanced materials or enable emulating different materials at each voxel. HP's multi-jet fusion technology could enable design and manufacturing possibilities that surpass the limits of our imagination. In summary today, we went over the Saratech ecosystem and services provided by Saratech. We show two graphics that will help you narrow down your choices when making and choice on additive equipment. We spoke about what the future holds in materials and equipment. Lastly, we spoke about a couple advanced material solution applications, lost wax casting and injection molding. And now I'll turn it back over to Andrea. Awesome. <clears throat> so if you have any questions or comments at this time, 
Um, you can go ahead and bring them up. I'll go over a couple of things and give you a minute. Um, so if you're ready to take it to the next level, as you know, um, we offer Mark Forged HP and Big Rep Additive Manufacturing. Um, so if you have any questions about whether um, which one might be a good fit for you, we have um, some of the best experts in the field, I believe. So um, no question is too big or too small. So please reach out to us if you're looking for engineering services, training, um, and especially software and additive manufacturing. We'll be posting the video, as I said earlier, uh, to our YouTube channel. Uh, so, and I will also be sending the link out to each of you. Uh, and as soon as we end this session, please make sure that you stick around for just about 30 seconds uh, and let us know how we did today. Any feedback is always welcome. Um, checking to see if we have any questions. I don't see any questions right now. So if you come up with any questions or comments, like I said, please feel free to leave them in the survey as soon as we uh, end the session. And thank you all so much for attending. Make sure that you follow us and, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're going to be posting lots of videos in the coming weeks, um, some short videos um, and also longer videos. And then uh, you can find out about all of our events on our Facebook page and LinkedIn. Uh, as well as Twitter. So thank you all again so much for coming and have a wonderful day.